The third nerve is the long thoracic. This is another very thin but uh, commonly injured nerve in, a, in a, some sporting, some sport activities uh, like throwing. And uh, uh, you know that uh, the long thoracic nerve arises from uh, the anterior branches uh, of C5 down to C7, and then it uh, uh, pierces the scalenus medius, the middle scalene muscle, after crossing the middle scalene, uh, it uh, passes uh, deep to the clavicle and uh, it uh, then uh, descends uh, 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 along the outer border of the serratus anterior, supplying the serratus anterior. This is the function of the serratus anterior and in cases of a palsy, a palsy of the long thoracic nerve, we have uh, the, the characteristic winging scapula. Uh, so basically, when we check uh, the scalene muscle with the, uh, on transverse plane, remember this uh, scanning plane was also used for the sub uh, suprascapular nerve. Uh, remember that this is the position of the phrenic, this is the position of the long thoracic. So if you know this kind of arrangement, everything is clear. So please see it here. Uh, basically, in, in I'm sorry, I had a slide, but I can comment on the slide uh, later on. Um, this is the, the scanning plane. And uh, this is the scalenus medius. So you see the fascicles here of the phrenic nerve. This is C5, this is C6, this is C7, and uh, this is the scalenus medius. So Blue. this is the long thoracic. I go up and I can see the long thoracic in its short axis within the scalenus medius. The, uh, the nerve may be stretched in the, this area and you can see a fusiform enlargement of the nerve here in cases of uh, 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 long thoracic neuropathy. And then you can follow the nerve down, down, down and it will be examined uh, on, in the more distally, uh, close to the serratus anterior, very close to the muscle fascia uh, 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 and at the level of the mid-axillary line. Uh, in cases of a winging scapula, uh, remember that you should differentiate an neuropathy of the, of the long thoracic from a neuropathy you can switch, uh, uh, affecting the sp spinal accessory nerve. Uh, this is the, uh, some comment about the um, um, injury of the long thoracic uh, during sporting activities. Um, for the most, uh, um, the injuries are related uh, to traction of the nerve uh, and the mechanism is the, uh, when the athlete's head is tilted or rotated lateral away from the affected extremity. Um, there may be some stretching of the nerve because uh, there are many points of section. One is the level of the uh, um, scalenus medius, the other one is the level of the uh, serratus anterior, and uh, this condition may be very disabling. Um, during the, 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 in general, lesions are neuropraxic lesion, and so the um, um, ultrasound examination is not positive unless to see uh, some uh, uh, deficit in the, in, in the muscle. The spinal accessory nerve is a, a cranic nerve, you know, and uh, it pierces the, the sternocleidomastoid going down uh, to uh, uh, supply the, uh, this muscle, the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius, and it may cause uh, a wing and scapula. Uh, remember that the long accessory nerve, uh, the long thoracic nerve causes uh, a, a denovation of the serratus anterior. So uh, muscle atrophy is specific for each of these two nerves. And uh, uh, so, uh, when you have any doubts, go to check these uh, three muscles uh, to differentiate a problem affecting the spinal accessory from a problem related to the long thoracic. How to check the uh, spinal accessory? Go to to image the sternocleidomastoid muscle cranially in the neck at this area because uh, the nerve pierces the muscle. It crosses the muscle and then it crosses the posterior triangle of the neck going down to move deep to the trapezius and to supply uh, this last muscle. So basically, to, uh, to check the spinal accessory nerve, we should place the transducer in a transverse plane here uh, at the level of the neck, and this is the uh, um, sternocleidomastoid. 
Then I go up and I look at the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And uh, at a given, uh, probably we need uh, to change the transducer. This is the point. Uh, this is the, the crossing point for the uh, um, uh, spinal accessory nerve. Please change the transducer. We use a, a 18 megahertz probe now to have more resolution. And uh, uh, we go to check the sternocleidomastoid again. And uh, uh, the we follow it down and up, and uh, this is the point. This is the hyperechoic uh, line in the muscle. When you look inside, you probably see, I hope you see, a very thin band. And the musculocutaneous is uh, the forgotten nerve because um, uh, in general, uh, um, there, are, um, there is a lot of literature about the three other nerves of the upper extremity, the, the uh, radial, the median, and the ulnar, but uh, a few about the musculocutaneous. Uh, remember that the musculocutaneous arises from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus, and then it pierces the coracobrachialis muscle, uh, passing then between the coracobrachialis and the uh, biceps brachii to go down to supply the coracobrachialis, the, uh, the biceps, and the brachialis muscle. So when you go to scan uh, the uh, musculocutaneous nerve, uh, remember that it arises from the lateral cord of the plexus. This is the useful landmark, the axillary artery. Uh, this is the appearance of the coracobrachialis on short axis planes, and the, the nerve passes in between the coracobrachialis, that it migrates between the coracobrachialis and the two heads of the uh, biceps brachii. So before the short head, and then it uh, goes more uh, laterally to pass deep to the uh, long head of the biceps. This is the position. So uh, the, uh, the, the, the hand is, is placed on the back, it's a different position compared to the, to the one we use for the axillary nerve. And uh, uh, in this position, the nerve becomes very superficial. Uh, you, uh, the, the main landmark is the axillary artery, and then you will see the two bellies of the coracobrachialis and the biceps, and the nerve is in the middle. So, <clears throat> again, this is the position. The, here. Uh, you place the, the, um, the probe over the um, anterior wall of the axilla. Um, so, and uh, where is the, where is the, uh, the the artery. The, art the artery is just in the center. Here we can in increase the magnification of the image. Uh, you see the bas uh, basilic vein. These are brachial veins. And then uh, when I go up, uh, I see that the, the artery is uh, uh, surrounded by nerve fascicles. These are the cords of the plexus going down in the arm. I see that uh, there is a nerve arising here from the lateral cord, and, and I go uh, down, and I see the nerve as it enters a space between two uh, muscle bellies. This is the, this is the coracobrachialis. And finally, uh, going more distally, I see the nerve exiting the coracobrachialis and passing between the coracobrachialis and the biceps brachii. So this is, in my opinion, this is the best position to image uh, the uh, musculocutaneous nerve because the musculocutaneous nerve is very superficial using uh, this kind of uh, scanning plane. Um, thank you very much for your attention.